Hey there, welcome to Get Up and Go Challenge 40, our 40 day challenge to get moving in the direction that we want to go. Day 11. And it's titled, We All Gotta Pee. Well, in addition to, we all actually have to do that as part of our natural development and natural existence. Uh, P in this case stands for progress. Every human being, each and every one of us, has to feel like we are making progress towards something in our life or we feel like we're stagnant and dying. I think a lot of the depression that people are feeling in the world nowadays is because they have the sense and the feeling that they're not making progress. I know depression's out of my vocabulary. I don't know if we talked about that or not, but we can if anyone's interested. How I eliminated depression from my life because it was that or I was not gonna be here anymore. And how you can do that too with any emotion or anything that's causing you trauma and trouble. Um, but progress means that we're moving towards something in our life. One of my favorite exercises that I learned to determine and look at my life differently and see where I'm going and how I'm progressing um, and guess what? Progress doesn't have to be positive all the time. Sometimes progress is negative and we have to get to a point in our life where we'll make change. Nothing happens. We don't change anything in our lives unless we're motivated to change them. And that usually comes from some painful event or some challenge that causes us to say, no, this is not good enough. This is not acceptable. What am I going to do? What can I do to make a difference, to make a change in my life or in my circumstances or in my situation? Now, sneaking a drink of coffee here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share an exercise with you, a very powerful, quick and easy to do exercise, or you can make it take days and weeks, but you can do it in, you know, 20 minutes if you want. I did mine in about less than 20 minutes, and I'll show you and I'll share that with you. But what we're looking for is progress in our life, right? Progress in any area or aspect of our life. Now, I am working on for this first run through the challenge and the challenge change process my physical well-being, right? Physical, because if we don't have our health, I, I honestly believe it's the foundation to all of the other versions of, of, of us and all the other aspects of our life. If we're not physically okay, if we're not physically strong and we have energy and, 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 and the health that we need, we can't do anything else. Everything is dependent on us and being able to live in our bodies and succeed. So I picked physical as my first run through during this 40 day challenge, my first area to run through. And yesterday, of all of the options, the one I chose to take action on was, I'm not gonna eat any sugar for the next 30 days. Now secretly, yesterday was day 10 for me because I decided at the beginning of this challenge that physical was most important. And one of the things I know that I need to do is cut out absolutely sugar and processed foods. Now I haven't cut out all the processed foods. I'm still eating processed salads and things without the dressing because of convenience and all that's going on in the world. but. I, I cut out sugar. Now, I tested myself with my willpower on that and I made chocolate chip cookies with my granddaughter yesterday. I didn't need a single one, didn't need a bite, didn't need any cookie dough, and I really, really wanted to. And she had root beer floats for lunch because her dad brought her the, the fixings for root beer floats. And, and I was like, I love root beer floats. They're one of my favorite things, but they're, they're so laden with sugar, not even an option. So for the rest of the 30 days, one thing I'm gonna do and carry through to make progress and see how it impacts me is cutting out sugar, right? Next, I'm gonna have to probably cut out salt, but right now, I just picked sugar because I know sugar, my body does not react well, it does not treat sugar well. It'll give me that little spike of energy and then I tank and, and feel like I need to crawl up and then curl up in a little ball and take a nap. So, how will I know I'm making progress? How will I know I am moving in the direction that I want for my health, for my physical well-being? For you, it might be finances or it might be relationships. But for right now, I'm just talking about my personal example. So how do I know I'm making progress? A part of it is knowing where we've come from. And guess what? Progress is over time and it's over our lifetime. It isn't immediate gratification. So much of the time, I remember going on diets in the past and I would judge a diet, which most of them were crazy if I look back now and think about them, but I would judge a diet on how fast I would lose weight. And usually it was how fast would I lose water weight, right? And so it wasn't a great judge of it, but I was looking for the quick result, the immediate gratification. And that does not work long, time, long term. Every diet I ever went on, that I went on a diet that wasn't a lifestyle change, failed. It might not have failed immediately, but it failed pretty fast. I remember 
for my wedding, I, I, I had my son before I got married, and so I wanted to lose all that um, pregnancy weight. And so I got married when he was 10 months old and to his dad, and uh, I had lost a ton of weight. I, I even weighed less than I did before I got pregnant. And we went on a cruise, and I gained like seven or eight pounds on that cruise. Like in a week-long cruise, I gained like a pound a day. And I remember being devastated and upset because I had worked so hard to take off that weight, but I hadn't. I'd exercised super duper hard and I'd done, I'd really restricted my eating. And so I hadn't changed my lifestyle for a lifetime. And so that not all, you know, all the weight didn't come back, but you know, 10 pounds, boom, was like overnight. And so it can go either way, especially with our physical well being. So the exercise I want to teach you today, and I'm going to encourage you to do as your action item, um, is to do this exercise. But all you have to do is share one thing that you learned from doing this exercise, one aha that you had from doing this exercise. I actually did this, I think, probably for the first time when I was working at Procter & Gamble. One of my first jobs, out of, well, actually my first job out of college, was working for Procter & Gamble, making toilet paper. So I, I could tell you stories about toilet paper all day long. But that was one of my first jobs. And one of the amazing things about Procter & Gamble is they have incredible training programs and incredible training and, and development for their employees. And as such, I took advantage of everything that I could while I was there. Um, some of the best trainings I've ever had gave me the foundation for, for my progress and my lifelong love of learning was because of that foundation and those trains I had. And one of the exercises that I did in one of those trainings, and don't ask me which one, I have no idea. I've done so many trainings throughout my many decades of, of life. I have lost track of where all of them came from, but I didn't make them up. I never made these up, and I never would say I made them up. But I have found this one particularly valuable for myself and for those people that I interact with and work with. I've even had my kids do this exercise. And what it is, is it's called the lifeline exercise. You take a piece of paper, you draw a line on it, and then you just start mapping out high points and low points in your life. And it, there's no right or wrong answers. It's things that remember and come to mind. And why I like doing a line and then just mapping in. So this is when I was born, 1960. And then this is 2020, because that's where we are now. And you just put points on the graph for high points and low points. So. I consider um, when I was sick and bedridden, low points. I consider my eye surgery and my kidney surgery, low points. I consider my sudden end cardiac arrest, my lowest point. I don't think you can get a lower point than dead. So this is probably way down here, but it's just a quick and dirty picture of the things in your life. And I want you to put on high points above the line. I put, this is how I do it. High points above the line, low points below the line. And the line is just, every day going through your life, normal things, right? And we're looking for the good and the, the really high and the really low because these are the events that have the ability to change the, direct, the trajectory of our life. For example, when I got married, let's see, where is married on here? Now, looking back at history, I'd probably make that a low point, but at the time, it was a high point. So we put it where it is on, I guess it is here as a high point. Um, not my highest, but it's as a high point. So our successes, our achievements, things that made us feel really, really good. Maybe it isn't even a huge achievement to anyone else, but somebody had a huge positive impact on your life. Maybe you met someone and they were your friend for a little bit of time, but they had this huge impact on helping you to increase your confidence or feel better about something or some area of your life and help you through something. That might be a high point. So just map out the high points and low points. And what we're looking for is the trend of our lives, right? Sometimes if I would have done a trend line, my life would have definitely been going down. Other times, overall, it's going up. And that's what we're looking for. Now, progress can be, I'm going down this road and I'm gonna get to some point where I'm gonna stop and then make a change. But how far down do I have to get before I'll stop and make a change? With respect to my health, I had to actually get down to dead before I made a change. I don't recommend that, but each of us are different. Each of our path, each of our roads, each of our life experiences and lifelines are gonna be different. And they're designed uniquely for us. And I know that that seems so strange to, to put it that way, but every experience we have is a gift. And in that experience, there's a gift and something 
that is for us in that. And when we look at our life that way, that everything is for us, not against us, it's amazing how our life starts to take off and, and we feel progress. So today, draw your lifeline. Again, you could spend days and hours. I think the first time I did this, I spent about a week on it. And now this one, I spent about, you know, five minutes at that on, just made the line and started mapping stuff out. <laughs> did I forget things? Of course I did. The cool thing about doing this is you can keep this and you can add to it and, and, and change it however you want, however, use it as a tool. Every tool we use needs to serve us. It needs to be for our benefit. Now, some tools are, are for us and, and they're painful to go through, but they always serve us and serve me. That's why I have this affinity. I love workbooks. I love workbooks that go with books because that's how I put things into action and I actually learn and um, really absorb and utilize the information from books and things. So I say I love books with workbooks. But today, this is your exercise. Now we're looking for <clears throat> progress, right? And also with P and with progress, we think about continuous improvement. We think about, you know, are we always looking for ways to, to make our life better? Are we always looking for ways to make um, our relationships better? Are we always looking for ways to make our jobs and our careers and our businesses better? That's, that's up to us on an individual basis. Yep, our business or our company or our employer might do that, but they're doing that for their benefit and the benefit of their business. It's up to us individually to be creating the life that we want. And you know, we can give that away to other people and give our personal power away to other people, but I say, why the heck would you want to? You want to be in control of your life. I want to be in control of my life. I don't want anybody else pulling my puppet strings. Been there, done that, wasn't very fun. Glad to be out of that ball game. So today, progress. Are you making progress? Just ask yourself. Am I making progress in my physical well-being and health? Well, I wasn't, and so that's why I said, this is the one I've got to work on. I felt like I was stagnant, and actually I felt like I was going down, 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 and I knew I was because my clothes were getting tighter. I was feeling sleepy and tired in like the middle of the day playing with my granddaughter. I was like exhausted and falling asleep on the couch when we're playing a game, she's like, I win, and I'm like, well, you win all the time because grandma's not paying attention. She wins all the time anyway. <laughs> She's definitely got the winning bug going on right now. So we're looking for progress, continuous improvement, moving our life in the direction we want to go. That's it, that's our exercise for today. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below, just ask and get excited because tomorrow we are gonna wrap up this framework and foundation and then guess what? We're gonna jump right into something new. Or if you don't feel like you've made enough progress during the first run through the the foundation, the process of always handling challenges and change in your life, then don't fret because we're going to go through it again and again, at least three times. Mm -hmm.